thank you very much for checking out this Autodesk Vault tips and tricks video. Yes, it's Vault. This video is a basic setup guide. Um, when I say setup guide, I have to make the assumption that you've managed to install it. I can't talk you through that. There's limits and restrictions as to what we can do in a tutorial video. So I'm going to have to assume you've installed it and that you've also got a suitable Autodesk CAD application installed, i.e. Inventor or AutoCAD or a similar. Uh, so, and, and also that you know your login. You need to know a login account to get in there and have administrator access. If you don't, just don't bother. If you're not, an, if you're not a Vault administrator, you're not going to get very far. And I'd question as to why you're trying to set up Vault if you've been denied administrator access, but that's a different story. Okay, there's a number of different ways to set up Vault initially. Some people have their own preferences. The way I'm going to show you is what I've done for, for many years, several years, and it works absolutely perfectly fine. Um, there's ways and reasons for why I do with what I do and how I set up how I set up, and I will explain that as I go along. Okay, so to get things going, like I said, there's no particular order in how you do this. So the first thing I always do when I'm setting up a new vault is I create the local working folder. So I'm going to delete that one there because that's a, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. So go to your C drive and it's always best practice to dump the files onto the C drive. Try to avoid dumping them onto a D drive or an E drive. Um, the, the reason for that is because Vault likes to be consistent as to where it puts its local working files. So if you decide to put your local working folder on a D drive, that means everybody else kind of has to use a D drive and not everybody has a D drive in your office. And then you start after changing who's got what local working folders. You just don't want to, you don't want to go in that direction. Just, just keep it on the C drive. If your C drive isn't big enough, then I'm you know, come on, <laughs> you need a better computer, you, you're working in a serious drawn office here. You need the equipment good enough to do the job. So, what we're going to do is go to the C drive and we're going to create a new working folder. Now, I always recommend you call your local workspace dollar working folder. Okay, what is the working folder? The working folder is the location on your PC that Vault will deposit the files that you're about to work on. Vault itself, I, I, I have to assume you know this, but I'm going to reiterate it. Vault is a big storage pot which sits on a server. That's the master copy of all your drawings and all your, your models and everything else. When you want to work on them, Vault will spit them out of itself and then dump them into this folder here and you will work on them locally. You'll save, work, save, work, save, and then when you're finished with them at the end of every day, you'll then check them back into the vault and they'll disappear from your working folder and back into the vault. So it's a temporary working folder. So the reason for calling it dollar working folder is firstly, if you put a dollar in front of it, it will always appear at the top of your, uh, you, you know, your, your Windows Explorer view. And what I also do is I go to the properties of this folder. This is completely optional, but it's something which I like to do. And I change the icon to like a little hard disk symbol, something like that, just so it stands out. You know, you're working on a drawing office PC, it's probably the, the most commonly accessed folder that you're going to be going to, so it stands out. Uh, so the dollar sign is that it appears at the top, and working folder is the name that is referred to throughout Vault. You know, go to the working folder, check out to the working folder. It's commonly referred to that consistently across all of Vault. A lot of people change the name and call it just Vault. They'll call this local working folder Vault, which is a bad idea. It still does the job, but new starters who start with Vault that come into your office. Believe it or not, this might sound crazy, but many people confuse the actual vault with a folder on their PC that's called vault. And it's a difficult habit to try and break them out of, and you just, you, you don't want to be in the position to have that conversation, trust me. So, dollar working folder. Okay, inside here, we're going to create a couple of subfolders. We're going to have one that's going to be called content center files. Now, obviously, you can tell by my outrageous accent that I'm in the UK. However, I've spelt content center the American way, E-R as opposed to R-E. Again, that's for consistency. Throughout Inventor, if you are using the content center, and obviously it goes out saying I'm setting this up to work with Inventor. If you're working with AutoCAD, you wouldn't have to do this. This is to work with Inventor. So, yeah, in, in Inventor, it refers to the content center files spelt the American way, so we're going to keep it that way. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create the parent level of your workspace. So your working folder, that's sort of like the, the, the root 
of the vault working folder and then the next folder down is the parent level where all the files will be saved directly beneath now you can call this whatever you want however it is really important that you call it something sensible because later, later on as you use vault and your vault gets bigger it becomes increasingly difficult almost impossible to ever rename this folder so give it something you know name it something sensible uh, don't call it drawings as my drone office did many years ago before I got there um, because there's a lot more than drawings in there. I tend to call it engineer. It's difficult to type and talk at the same time. Engineering data. Something like that. Uh, and another thing you can do as well as that is you can create an additional folder just called libraries. This is optional, but it's good to have a libraries folder there as well. Okay, that's pretty much it for our local workspace setup. We can leave it just like that for now. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go across into Vault. The Vault Client. I'm working currently with Vault Professional 2015 Release 0 or Release 1, whichever you prefer. But this will work with any version of Vault. Uh, notice I'm also using Vault Professional, but that doesn't matter. This, this will also work with Vault Basic. I am using no professional features or functionality throughout the course of this video. So we're going to go to File and then Login. And as I said earlier, you're going to need to know your administrator, username and password. By default, the vault will give your administrator a blank password, so you should just be able to log in with the username as administrator, a blank password. The server is the name of the PC and or server uh, that you've installed the vault ADMS onto. If it's just your PC, type in your PC name, or you can type in localhost. Um, however, mine is on a server called TSVR1. Uh, the vault itself, assuming you've set this up correctly, you should have a vault installed inside your ADMS. If you don't, when you click these little three radio buttons here, you won't see anything appear here. Uh, I've got two vaults and I'm going to log into this blank one which is just called Vault. If you're only ever going to log in as this user, you can say automatically log me in next session so every time you fire up the Vault client, it will automatically log you in. Alright then, so what we're going to do next? Well, we now need to create the folder structure inside the Vault. This is a one-off process, it's the initial setup. So we're going to go to the Project Explorer and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to create a mirror of the folder structure that we created on our local workspace because that's essentially what it is. Your vault internal folders mirror your local workspace. So if, it checked, if you check a file out from engineering data in vault you want it to go into the engineering data folder on your local workspace. So that's exactly what we're going to do and notice as well here where it says Project Explorer brackets dollar close brackets dollar represents the root of the vault hence why I've put the dollar symbol as well in the local working folder name it's just that familiarity for new users they see the dollar they can match that up with the fo the equivalent folder on their C drive so inside vault we are going to start creating some additional folders so we're going to create a new folder and this is going to be our engineering data folder that's that so we've got our engineering data folder. We now need to create the content center files folder and the libraries folder. Now, these two folders are, it's not vital, but they are technically library folders. The files that go into these folders are read-only standard parts that shouldn't really ever change, nuts and bolts and stuff like that. So underneath Project Explorer, we're just gonna go and create a new library folder. So right click on Project Explorer, new library folder, and we're gonna call this the exact same name. Be very, very attentive to the spelling. If you spell it wrong, it will not copy files out of the vault to the folder on your little workspace. It will copy it out to the whatever you, however you spell it here. So be very careful with the spelling. And then the same goes for another library folder and we're going to call this libraries. Okay, so that's our internal folder structure created. The next thing we need to do is to go across into Inventor. And again, this is Inventor specific and we need to create a project file that will connect Inventor to the vault. So in Inventor we're going to go into the Getting Started tab and Projects and there's a little bit of jiggery pokery needed here. What we need to do is click New to make a new project. It's going to be a vault project. Next. The name of the project is entirely up to you. You can call it vault, you can call it your company name, you can call it anything you like. For the project workspace folder just leave that as it is for now but make sure that it is pointing to your local workspace. So the first path should be C colon backslash dollar working folder. You're free to browse to that if you like. Um, but the key here, and it, it's probably not worth explaining why, but you do need to put it in initially in a subfolder 
underneath dollar working folder. It's just one of those voltisms. So we're going to go next and then finished. Okay, so we've now got a project file created. The jiggery pokery starts here. What we're going to do is activate the default project and then delete our vault project, which seems crazy. It is, but it is. That's the way it is. Go back to Windows Explorer, go into the engineering data folder, and then just cut and paste your project file up to the top level. Go back to Inventor, Projects, Browse, go to your C drive, your dollar working folder, and then load in the vault project file. Okay, save that, and it'll say it needs to be migrated. Click yes. Okay, next steps. We need to define the folders that the project file is going to reference. So we're going to go into the workspace area of the project settings, but make sure vault is ticked and highlighted in blue. Go to the workspace, right click and edit that, and we're going to browse to the engineering data folder. So C, working folder, engineering data. Click off there, and that's your workspace done. Next, we're going to set up the libraries folder. So right click on libraries, add a path, again, browse, to your engineering data folder, well, your work dollar working folder, and then the libraries folder. And then just for clarity, I guess you can call this libraries instead of library. And the final path is the content center files path. So we need to go into folder options, expand that, go to content center files, edit, and then browse to see dollar working folder, content center files. Notice how these are now relative paths. They're now relative to the location of the project file. It just makes accessing files and referencing files a hell of a lot easier. Your templates and your design data, they could be anywhere. Depends on your network infrastructure, where they are. They could be on your PC, on a server. That's entirely, you know, situation dependent. Click save, and we're as good as done for now. That's about as much as we need to get you going. Okay, we're gonna click done. The next thing we need to do is to log your inventor into Vault. So hit the Vault ribbon tab, and if you're not logged into, into Vault via inventor already, click login and put in the same credentials as you logged into the Vault client. So Vault account, administrator, password, server name, Vault name. Automatically log in next session and then hit OK. OK, so almost there. Final steps is we need to connect the local folders to the Vault folders. We need to establish that final link. So we're going to select Access on the Vault ribbon tab. Click this little Access drop down here and we're going to go to Map Folders. For the project route, we're going to click Edit and then we're going to just link that to the top level of the vault, the dollar folder. For the content center files, we're going to edit that and we're going to select the vault content center files folder. We're then going to do the same for libraries, link that to the vault library folder and then click OK. OK, we're pretty much almost done. So now just to test that things do work is we're going to create a new part file. Uh, we're going to save that in our engineering data folder. We're just going to call it test part. Uh, just ignore this. This is just uh, my office specific gump. And then we're going to go to the Vault plugin with an inventor, which is on the left hand side here. Hit the little model button, go to Vault. Right click on Test Part. Check in. Ensure everything looks okay here. So Test Part is going to go into the Vault folder. So what you're looking at here is the Vault folders the dollar folder, the engineering folder, which is exactly where our Test Part is in our local workspace. Dollar working folder, engineering data. And there's test part. It's going to go into the exact equivalent folder in Vault. Click OK. And let's go across to Vault. Hit Refresh. Go to the Project Explorer. And then just browse down and you should now see underneath Engineering Data. And there's your test part. OK. So the way things work now is in the future when you do want to create a, a new folder, for example, a new subfolder inside Vault, you can start off by designing a new file. Uh, hit save and then underneath engineering data you can say okay this is going to be a new folder for project xyz and then save you know i'm not bracket something like that and then when we check that into vault which you can also do via this way right click on the node go to vault and then check in It'll then create this project XYZ folder inside Vault and put the bracket file underneath that folder. Go back across to Vault, do a quick refresh. We should now see our bracket, or sorry, our project XYZ folder created with the file bracket underneath. So just further access into Vault, 
uh, via Inventor, uh, you can go to the Vault tab and then open directly from Vault. This will create an interface between Inventor and Vault where you can browse, well, it depends how you've got your, your list set up, but go to Details, the Detail View, or you've got icons, that's entirely up to yourself. Go to Engineering Data, Project XYZ, there's my pop bracket, so we're looking inside the Vault right now, and then click Open. Do you want to check it out? Yes, I do, because I'm going to do some work. And there we go. Okay, so that's a very basic setup on how to get Vault going with Inventor. Uh, sorry, it's a bit long, but there are a few steps required to get things working and get things working properly. So hopefully that taught somebody something, I hope. <laughs> uh, if you've got any questions, please do put them in the comments in the video down below. And like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see further tips and tricks videos on Vault or Inventor. And until next time, guys, thank you very much, and I will see you later on.